In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about EUI 64, or the Extended Unique Identifier 64-bit, and how it helps to generate IPv6 addresses. So I have Packet Tracer 6.0.1 open, and I've dragged out a router. I've got a 1941 router, a 2960 switch, and I've got a PC here. Let's click on the PC, and what I'll do is I'll click on IP configuration, and you can see here that the PC has already auto-configured a link local IPv6 address. And EUI 64 has been used to help generate this unique link local address which identifies this particular PC on the network. Now what did EUI 64 do? EUI 64 helped to generate the last 64 bits of this IPv6 address. This is the network portion of the address. It's also the portion that identifies this as being a link local address because of the FE80. And then the last 64 bits is unique and it identifies this particular PC. And in this case, EUI64 was involved to help generate this portion of the address. How was it involved? Essentially, EUI64 takes the 48-bit MAC address associated with the PC's NIC and then turns it into a 64-bit unique identifier to identify the host. So, essentially, with this link local address, the second half of the address, or this portion, the 64-bit second half of the address, has been generated from the 48-bit MAC address, and we'll be able to see this. Let's close this window and open up the command prompt. And you can see that I've already put in an IP config all command, and you can see there's our physical address, so this is the MAC address of the PC. And then right below it, you can see the link local IPv6 address. And notice the similarities. Notice how the link local address ends with 35 AD, and the MAC address ends with 35 AD. Notice the A235 AD, A235 AD. Now the rest of it gets a little bit confusing. You can see that there's a um, Let's see here, CFA2. Well, we can see a CF right here. So there's a CF, but or a CCF. And then you can see here a CCF, but it seems to be a little bit different on this half of the MAC address. And I'll show you how that works. If we open up Notepad, we can show how the 64-bit unique identifier was generated from the 48-bit MAC address. So that's what I've done here. I've pasted in the MAC address up here and the link local address right here. And before we see how the 64-bit unique identifier was generated from the MAC address, let's decompress this IPv6 link local address. So to decompress it, we'll put a zero here. And then we need to put zeros here. One, two, three, four, colon, one, two, three, four, colon, one, two, three, four. All right, and I'll back up a little bit here. So there is the link local address, 128 bits. Now, the part that we're concerned with is the second half of the 128-bit address, or the last 64 bits. This is the portion that identifies the host. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll open that up here, and then I'll back this out here. So this is the part that we're concerned with. How did the 48-bit MAC address turn into the 64-bit unique identifier in the IPv6 link local address? Well, it's pretty easy. What happens is the MAC address is split down the middle. So we take this MAC address and we split it down the middle. And right in the middle is put FFFE. So FF. FE is placed into the middle of the address. So we'll do that now. And we'll put a colon here. And so you can see already that this por half of, or this portion of the MAC address now looks exactly like the, this portion of the link local address. So FFFE is inserted in the middle. And then over here, you can see that we still have some work to do. 000C has been changed to 020C. So what also needs to happen in the conversion of the MAC address to a 64-bit unique identifier is the seventh bit from the left is flipped. So let's see here, I'll just write that down. The seventh bit from the left 
is flipped. All right, so to do that, what we'll need to do is we'll need to take these two hex characters and turn them into binary so that we can flip the seventh bit. So to do that, what I'll do is, so 0, 0 in binary is actually, we'll say, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. So that is these two hex characters in binary. Each hex character is four bits in binary. So these four bits equals this one character, and these four bits equals this character. All right, so if we count the seventh bit, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then this bit will get flipped from a zero to a one. And so now it's pretty easy. All we have to do is convert the binary back to hex, and we'll have our address. So if you convert zero, zero, zero back to hex, you get zero right here. I'll just place it right here. And if you convert 0, 0, 1, 0 back to hex, let's see what we have here. This is an 8-bit, or the 8th position, the 4's position, the 2's position, and the 1's position. So we have a 2. So that becomes a 2. So that's how 0, 0, 0, C turns into 0, 2, 0, C, is the 7th bit counted from the left is converted or flipped. And you can see it's flipped to a 1 which then turn this into a 2. And so that's how you get the 64-bit unique identifier EUI64 from a 48-bit MAC address. Now if you try to look at this on your PC, you're probably not going to see it because on a Windows machine, your link local address isn't generated from your MAC address using EUI64. Your link local address on your Windows machine has been randomly generated. The numbers have been randomly generated, so the MAC address is not involved and EUI64 is not used.